Where is she? She's in chain. Oh, okay. Welcome to the safest place in the United States of America. Uh, welcome to the village board meeting of Skokie for Monday, December the 17th. Gives me great pleasure to announce the Cub Scout Pack 970, which will help us this evening in the Pledge of Allegiance. Gentlemen? Audience, please rise. Color guard attention. Color guard forward march. Color guard post colors. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color guard dismissed. Thank you. Great job. The meeting will come to order and the clerk will please call the roll. Trustee Roberts? Here. Trustee Sutker? Here. Trustee Ulrich? Here. Trustee Bromberg? Here. Trustee Klein is absent today. Trustee Greg Keeler? Here. Mayor Windus? Here we have a quorum. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, the promotion of uh, three members of our fire department uh, before calling up uh, our village clerk to do the uh, promotion swearings in, I would like to recognize David Jones, uh, who uh, by the consent agenda this evening, which we will take up in just a minute, uh, is retiring after over 50 years. So, David? By the podium. There we go. <laughs> I would like to say a few words uh, about David. Uh, he is a uh, the epitome of a gentleman. He is always straightforward, but very kind, very honest. Uh, you never question where his views are coming from. They're always to make for a better community. He has served on the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners, my understanding is, since 1975. Before that, though, there is a story that I don't think many people know about David. Uh, when he first moved to the village of Skokie, it was a much different community than today. It wasn't as welcoming as it is. This was the late 1950s, early 1960s. Winds of change were about, and not everybody was welcoming. David moved in and Unfortunately, he suffered that problem. Mayor L. Smith was pretty angry about that. And also, somebody who I came to be very close to over the years, uh, became, eventually became chairman of our planning commission and a member of this board, Don Perrill, were very angry about the way some people in the village had acted. But being a gentleman, 
David understood that change comes about slowly with persistence. And David, Al Smith, and Don Perrill had that. Shortly after the problem, Al Smith w created the first human relations department in the state of Illinois. And David graciously agreed to join that. And as a result, David, Al Smith, and Don Perrill passed the state's first Fair Housing Act and helped to transform the village of Skokie and all of the areas around the village of Skokie. Today, we're very proud to say that this community is welcoming, not just for people of color or people of different religious beliefs, but welcoming in all of the other ways. And it couldn't be done without David Jones. He, he's done more than just change the community. He has also helped to oversee our police and fire departments becoming singularly among the elite in the nation. And I can't think of anything more fitting this evening in recognizing David than the promotions this evening. All three of our promotees this evening exemplify the very best in the village of Skokie and why it is that we are looked up to by so many of our fellow communities. And succeeding David is Will Evans, who had just so happened also had been at one time chairman of the Human Relations Commission, and also Burrow Rabinowitz, who has served on the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners for quite a long time as well, and he will now become our vice chairman. So is Will, Will and uh, Burrow, if you would. This truly is a wonderful evening, although a little bittersweet. Uh, with David uh, retiring, uh, it makes it a little bittersweet. But nevertheless, he is leaving our departments, police and fire, in very good shape. And he has also helped make our whole community that much better. So, David. Thank you for everything you've done. And would you introduce your family? Because I spotted a couple of them in the audience. Okay. Uh, my wife, Arthur Zimmerman. <laughs> and my daughter, Becky. <laughs> my granddaughter, Dakota. Grandson, Nathaniel. <laughs> My son in law, Mr. Betts. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for the nice things you said and uh, the things that you didn't say. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I told David that I had a couple scrolls of all the complaints I got about him over the years. <laughs> Jack I never had a complaint uh, at all. Uh, the next item on the agenda is approval of the consent agenda. Uh, I am going to take item C under the manager's report off the consent agenda. A motion is in order. Uh, Trustee uh, Gray Keeler. Oh, we're not there yet. Hold on, Gabe. Second by Trustee Sutker. Is there any other item anybody would like to have removed from the agenda? If not, uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts? Aye. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Ulrich? Aye. Trustee Bromberg? Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler? Aye. Mayor Windusen? Aye. The motion passes. Now it gives me great pleasure to 
introduce village clerk Pramod Shah, who will do the honors this evening. I know everybody is here for the motor fuel tax item. <laughs> Kathleen. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I. I. State your name. Kathleen Fergala. Having been. Having been appointed, appointed to the office of to the office of Deputy Fire Chief Deputy Fire Chief in the village of Skokie in the village of Skokie in the county of Cook in the county of Cook do solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the state of Illinois the Constitution of the state of Illinois and that I will faithfully discharge and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of deputy fire chief the duties of the office of the deputy fire chief according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability oh, <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. M much deserved. Thank you. I appreciate it's a, it. It's a great day for the village. Would you introduce your family and friends? I certainly will. <laughs> Let's see. I might have one out there somewhere. <laughs> uh -huh. I brought with me today my daughter, Lauren, all the way from Kansas City. <laughs> she, she's the shy one in the family. Uh, I have my dad, Frank. My sister Kimberly, <laughs> my significant other Jim, <laughs> and then I always say my bestie John, he's here today, <laughs> thank you. And in the audience I do have quite a few people that have molded me, shaped me into the firefighter that I am today, all of the retirees that are here that I followed in the footsteps of, that have guided me, saying, I wouldn't do that if I were you, <laughs> but I chose to do it anyway. Uh, and then the vast majority of the fellows that I've worked with and I still work with and I am in contact with every day and uh, friends from the outside as well. So thank you. And I would like to introduce Chief Hofleck. Welcome this evening. Thank you. Mark. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I. I. State your name, please. Mark Larson. Having been appointed to the office of having been appointed to the office of fire captain fire captain in the village of Skokie in the village of Skokie in the county of Cook in the county of Cook do solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the state of Illinois the Constitution of the state of Illinois and that I will faithfully discharge that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of fire captain the duties of the office of fire captain according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability congratulations thank you very much Captain, would you introduce your family and friends? Absolutely, Mayor. Right down here. Thank you. 
I got a whole roll here. So I, <laughs> we start with my father, Gordon. Next time is my mother, Barbara. With my sister, Carrie, on the end. In the mid-row, I got my wife, Mary. My daughter, McKenna. My nephew, Ann Mitchell. Miles in the middle here. And then my nephew, Joey. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor. It's Thank well you. deserved. Thank you. Thank you. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I state your name, please. Stephen Jaglin. Having been appointed to the office of fire captain. Having been appointed to the office of fire captain. In the village of Skokie. In the village of Skokie. In the county of Cook. In the county of Cook. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the Office of Fire Captain. The duties of the Office of Fire Captain. Congratulations. Thank you. Captain, would you introduce your family and friends? Sure. I'm going to keep it simple and start on the end. My son, <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> my son, Teresa. <laughs> my daughter, Rebecca. <laughs> my son, Brian. <laughs> my mom, Kathy. <laughs> my mother-in-law, Prudence. <laughs> and my father-in-law, Keith. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to all three of you. This is a proud moment for the village. I think, as you all know, uh, Skokie's pol f police and fire departments are recognized throughout the nation as flagship quality. And it's because of what all of you do on a day in and day out basis. This evening, it's only an example of just how great and how much the village appreciates everything you do. You're probably aware that every three years or so, we do a survey. It's done by an outside source, and we grade all of the departments. We ask the community, what do you think? And it's a scientifically done study. And the purpose of it is, if we're doing something well, Pat us on the back and we'll keep doing it. If we need to improve somewhere, let us know where and we'll work to improve it. The fire department consistently is in the 90% plus percentile every single time we do it. And I think it's that kind of recognition in addition to all of the national accreditations, the ISO number one, all of those recognitions that makes our community feel safe and attracts such great people here. So thank all of you for everything you do, and we congratulate Kathy, Mark, and Stephen for their promotions this evening. And Chief, welcome. Good to see you with us this evening. And why don't we take a break? I know everybody wants the, the MFT resolution, but I think somehow we would all like to take a moment to congratulate everybody. So thank you all for coming here and for your service.
Thank you. Okay. Oh, there he is. He's sitting in the back. Okay. The meeting of the village board will return to order. Next item on the agenda is report of our village manager, John Lockerby. Thank you, Mayor Van Dusen and village board. And good evening to everyone. Items A and B were approved under tonight's consent agenda. Item C is regarding a hanging flower baskets and containers installations and maintenance contract recommended being awarded to Christie Weber Landscape Incorporated, Chicago, Illinois, for $93,488.99. Two bids were received for a contract to install and maintain, including watering a minimum of four times per week, 420 hanging baskets and 75 containers in downtown Skokie and 194 hanging baskets on West Dempster Street from approximately May 15th through mid-October. The first bid was considered unresponsive because it contained mathematical errors and pricing on materials and labor was uh, highly suspect. It is recommended that a contract for decorative Hanging baskets and container plantings and their maintenance be awarded to the second bidder, Christie Weber Landscaping, in the amount of the $93,488. While the village has not worked with Christie Weber Landscaping in the past, favorable references were received from the village of Naperville, the Sheffield Neighborhood Association, and Uptown United. I concur with staff recommendation and respectfully request mayor and board approval. <laughs> A motion on item C is in order. Trustee Alanka, seconded by Trustee Roberts. Gabe, now. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Trustees. I completely disagree with some of the statements made. Uh, here to the board, to the trustees and to the board, because they were uh, more than ten thousand dollars different in the bid. Number one, number two, if you combine all the items of the bid, it is excess in ex excess of fifty thousand dollars more for the second bidder. Thirdly, uh, my company, which have worked for the village for over ten years, it has completely contract after contract without any problem. Uh, and we have uh, successfully worked with villages like Highland Park, Northbrook, uh, Evanston Park District, Evanston Village, the village of Wilmet, and furthermore, besides those and many other villages like Oakbrook and many others, uh, the, the recommended uh, uh, support <coughs> for our bid 
they were in check. Falsely a statements here to the board, to the <coughs> trustees, that is completely false. None of those two people, they were listed, they were no knowledgeable of our work, were checked out. And some of the other statements <coughs> made to make that decision, they were, they were made tonight, they were false. For that reason, I recommend the either further study or I turn down the second bidder and give it to the lowest bidder, which will provide the best uh, recommendation and support for the constituents of the village by giving them a lower bid, lower expense to the village, and better service. Thank you. You're welcome, Mayor. Uh, John, do you have any response? Um, Michael Leksik has been overseeing contracts with this contractor for a number of years and was actually the person that took the lead on reviewing uh, the bids for this project. Uh, Mike, would you uh, comment, please? Thank you. Um, I respectfully disagree with Mr. Hostelet's position. I believe he is mistaken uh, in, in regards to, to this bid. Uh, the numbers are there for, for anyone to see. There's an $8,809 difference in uh, the bids. Uh, Mr. Hoslett's bid was lower, uh, but upon review, his stated bid total was $60,405. After we did the bid tabulation to check all the unit pricing, the unit prices added up to $84,679.50. So there's a large discrepancy there. There were some math errors, some uh, sections were added incorrectly. So that was one reason we are rejecting his bid. Uh, the second reason the bid is not being considered is because in our contracts we have what's called an unbalanced bidding clause which reads, a bid is considered unbalanced if it is structured on the basis of nominal prices for some work and products and inflated prices for other works, work and products. Lump sum and unit price bids must reflect reasonable costs in relation to the work and the products being bid. The, bid, uh, the village will be the sole and final determiner if a bid is unbalanced. Any and all bids found to be unbalanced may be rejected uh, by the village. A review of the bid will show that there are a lot of unit prices for items that really don't make sense. We have various size containers throughout the village which require various amounts of plant material. It can't be the same price for a large container and uh, the same price for, for a small container. It doesn't make sense and it, it's, it's a cause for concern. Uh, in uh, regards to the references issue, we checked references of municipalities where KGI has worked. Some of them were not favorable, and I have to say we were listed as a reference. We have had a lengthy history with KGI with rather mixed results. Uh, for those reasons, this bid was considered unresponsive, and we are going with the what we consider is the low responsive and responsible bidder, which is Christy Weber Landscaping. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any comments or questions? If not, uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts. I vote aye. Trustee Sutker. Aye. Trustee Elrich. Aye. Trustee Bromberg. Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler. Aye. Mayor Vendus. Aye. The motion passes. Thank you. And that completes my report this evening. Thank, Thank you. you. The next item on the agenda is report of our corporation council, Michael Lord. Thank you, Mayor, trustees. Good evening, everyone. Items A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and K were on the consent agenda at the beginning of this evening's meeting, and they were all adopted. And that would conclude my report. Thank you. Next item is a matter of our planned commission, Paul Luke and Peter Pyre. Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mayor, members of the board. I bring to you case 2018-35P, a special use permit at 5144 Main Street. At the November 15th meeting of the Planning Commission, we reviewed the request for a special use permit for religious assembly in the B1 service commercial zoning district. The North Shore Islamic Center, known as NIC, 
is requesting a special use permit for religious uh, religious assembly at 5144 Main Street. The proposed use includes 20 to 30 minute prayer services up to five times per day. Services are short and congregants will include walkers and people who work in Skokie. They don't want to drive a long distance for a 30 minute service. A total of 10 vehicular parking spaces, including one accessible parking space and one bicycle parking space, will be provided on site. The existing parking spaces on the site are substandard with width, but are legal, and, uh, <coughs> but, legal but non conforming. As long as they don't come, become narrower, they will remain as is. The proposed religious assembly has a different use pattern than other religious houses of worship. As the majority of visitors arrive as individuals, not as families or households, thereby increasing parking demand beyond the village code's off-street parking requirement for religious assembly uses. The potential increases parking demand at full usage of the facility is therefore a concern and it may, may result in a negative impact on the neighborhood. Currently, the village motor vehicle parking requirements are based on the number of seats or linear inches of seating, basically a bench or a pew, in the main auditorium or assembly. No parking requirement exists specifically for prayer rugs. On December 6, 2018, the Planning Commission considered an amendment to the zoning chapter of the village code regarding religious assembly parking requirements as part of case 2018-46P. The Planning Commission recommended recommendation is to have religious assembly parking requirements determined by the Planning Commission upon consideration of evidence and testimony of the petitioner. The recommendation will be reviewed by the Corporation Council prior to the anticipated Monday, January 7th, 2019 Village Board meeting. Although the proposed capacity is 36 prayer rugs due to, due to the potential peak parking demand and on-site parking availability. The Planning Commission supports an initial maximum capacity of 20 prayer rugs, that is one space per two prayer rugs, with the option to return under the modified review, review process to request an increase up to 36 prayer rugs, that is one parking space per four prayer rugs as long as it can be d d demonstrated at the time that there will be a minimal to no impact on the surrounding neighborhood. The peak use of the site will be Friday afternoons year-round and 30 days of Ramadan. El Cid prayers held twice a year will not be held at this location. The space cannot be used as a social hall due to parking constraints. Therefore, the site can only be used for relig religious assembly and small meetings. Consideration of the neighborhood impact focuses around these times. The anticipated growth is from two members, which who which would they have now, to about 12 to 16 individuals in two to three years during the 1 p.m. prayer sessions. Similar religious assemblies use in Skokie are located at 4255 Main Street and 8201 Karloff Avenue. Complaints filed for these locations are primarily, primarily due to on-street parking issues such as fully or partially blocked driveways and residential in, in the uh, residential, residential neighborhoods. In illegal, a illegal civic, social, and fraternal organization use was located next door at 5142 Main Street, creating negative parking and noise-related impacts on the surrounding neighborhood. This prompted an investigation into the upper floor of 5142 Main Street by several village departments and a request by staff for a parking study for 5144 Main Street for tonight's special use case. This case was continued at the October 4th Planning Commission meeting to enable the petitioner to, to prepare a parking study and continue a second time to November 1st Planning Commission meeting so the petitioner and the village staff could meet to discuss the religious assembly request in an effort to work through issues related to the request and each and reach a solution 
that would work for everyone. The petitioners educated village staff on their beliefs and differences between various Muslim sects and their expectations about growing in space and transi transi transitioning to a larger space in the future. The plan commission is supportive of the petitioners suggested strategy of requiring attendees to sign up ahead of time for parking for Friday services to avoid parking issues before they occur. However, due to the involving understanding of the potential impacts of various types of religious assemblies use in the surrounding neighborhoods, the plan commission supports a reduced prayer rug capacity now with the option to expand the prayer rug capacity via the modified review process in the future. The expansion would be supported by the village as long as there are minimum to no negative impact on parking and or congestion in the surrounding neighborhood. Once this additional capacity is reached, the, the NIC would either need to establish a second location or, relake, or, relake, or relocate to a larger location. The special use permit will be for the NIC only it may not be transferred to another religious assembly use. Once they are no longer the owner or associated with this mosque location, the special use permit will automatically terminate. Uh, residents expressed concerns about their expansion plans by not using bicycles in the winter, how resident, com how resident complaints will be handled, the original plans for 30 to 50 people participating on Friday afternoon prayers, and noise, and noise resulting f from fellowship and, and other activities. In addition, residents offered solutions such as parking at Madison Elementary School and Calvary Church at times of high parking demand and establish a time zone for parking stickers in the neighborhood. No changes to the building exterior are planned. Exterior modifications to the building and the with the ins installation of signage and or creation of landscaping area will require a uh, <coughs> the appearance commission review and approval. The, the, pl uh, the plan commission recommends on a vote of six ayes, no nays, two absent with one seat vacant that this special use be approved. The, uh, we have petitioners in the audience tonight if, if, and I believe they want to make a presentation. Uh, this is Michael Durlocker, the uh, council. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you uh, for allowing us to present our petition for special use. I would like to thank um, the village staff, uh, Kerry uh, Haberstitch, who was um, part of the staff that has helped to us to, to uh, formulate the plan, uh, village council, and uh, Pete from the planning commission. Uh, we're appreciative of all the efforts that they have uh, made to get us here. Um, I would like to start by saying that we do accept the Planning Commission's recommendation. However, my client did initially uh, start the process back in June with the meeting uh, with the Planning Commission, uh, with the um, Planning Department, and then subsequently followed it up with the August uh, submit submittal of the special use petition uh, under the understanding that there was a four to one parking to uh, prayer mat or, or seating area, uh, which would have allowed 36 um, prayer mats um, through the village process and through the parking study and everything. They've, they've kind of recognized the village's concerns with respect to the area parking. Uh, they do want to come back on that modified special uh, modified review process uh, when they're ready to to show that they're um, a good neighbor for the vi for the village, good neighbor for the area, and that their additional permits won't uh, negatively impact the community. So again, they were hoping to get the full 36, but they're um, respectful of, of all the work and time that's been put in, and they're willing to move forward on the uh, planning commission's recommendation as stated. Thank you. Uh, and we want to likewise welcome the No Shore Islamic Center uh, and to thank you uh, for your skillful negotiation. Uh, these parking problems in neighborhoods are always difficult, but uh, we appreciate the cooperation and the modified, I think you'll, the modified review process is designed to give you an opportunity to get the changes you need as soon as you're ready 
without lengthy repeti repetitioning for a new special use permit or anything like that. So you have our assurances that when you are ready, uh, Peter and Carrie and John stand ready to help you and our legal counsel will be there with us as well. So thank you very much. Uh, and with this vote, we welcome you. Thank you. Call the roll, please. We need a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I thought we had a motion. Yeah. Trustee Roberts, so seconded by Trustee Gray Keeler. Trustee Roberts? Aye. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Ulrich? Aye. Trustee Bromberg? Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler? Aye. Mayor Vendus? Aye to the motion. Thank you. Who's my report? And I wish you a happy new year. Happy new year. Welcome, welcome to Skokie. Welcome. Next item on the agenda is the 2019-2020, it's hard to believe, Community Development Grant Public Hearing number one of four, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes. Carrie oh. Fix that for you. All right, good evening. Um, tonight is the beginning of the public hearing process to determine Skokie's use of Community Development Block Grant or CDBG funds for the 2019 to 2020 program year. Uh, public notice of this and upcoming public hearings was accomplished through an article in the Village's New Skokie Newsletter, a legal ad in the Skokie Review, and information on the Village website. Uh, the CDBG application availability was announced with 32 hard copy announcement letters and 110 email messages to service providers, community agencies, local governments, and institutions. And village departments were also invited to submit requests for funding. Uh, proposals for the coming year were due December 7th and are currently under review. So a proposal packet uh, will be transmitted to the board uh, for the next public hearing on Tuesday, January 22nd, which is after the Martin Luther King Jr. Day holiday. Um, the upcoming year will be the 45th year for Skokie's receipt of uh, CDBG funding from the federal government, during which time the village has benefited from over $22 million in total grants. At this time, uh, we are estimating that our entitlement for the upcoming year will be 550,000, which is less than what the amount we received for the current program year, but it's also more than what we received the two pre previous years. So we're trying to find a happy medium there and hope that we uh, find a, a found the right spot. Uh, ideally, we would uh, know the exact amount prior to the February budget hearing. Uh, this is unlikely, however, uh, so we'll proceed with our estimate and build flexibility into the budget and the action plan. Uh, we also plan to reprogram obligated funds from last year. Um, by way of background for everyone in the audience, uh, Skokie is an entitlement community with a population of more than 50,000 people and thus receives CDBG funding directly from the federal government. Uh, the village is able to develop its own programs and funding priorities, unlike smaller communities that must go through the state or the county uh, for funding of individual projects or activities. Funds must be used for projects or activities that principally benefit low and moderate income persons, uh, address potential or existing blighting conditions, or are in response to a major community emergency. At least 70% of the project funds must go toward activities benefiting low and moderate income persons. Uh, the intent is that 100% of Skokie's funds would go towards activities meeting the low moderate income benefit test. Um, all potential community development projects are reviewed to determine their consistency with the objectives of the Community Development Act and the, five -year, and the village's five-year consolidated plan. Uh, projects specifically benefiting identifiable groups of low and moderate income people are given priority. Funding priority is also extended to institutions and uh, community agencies that serve the needs of low and moderate income residents and projects that remove architectural barriers to disabled uh, elderly residents. 
Uh, so these are the goals and objectives from our five-year plan. Believe it or not, we're planning for year five. Uh, so we'll be going through a much larger process this time next year. Uh, so we have three objectives for capital improvements, um, making housing affordable, accessible, and sustainable, such as our home improvement program, uh, improving group homes, uh, improving public infrastructure, such as streets and sidewalks, uh, improving facilities that are usually non-residential buildings uh, and public services and then planning and, and administration activities. Uh, tonight's hearing is also being held to review the progress of our current program year activities. Uh, the board has received a report that outlined the status and progress of the fiscal year 19 and the outstanding uh, fiscal year 16, 17, and 18 uh, CDBG projects. Also included was our annually updated funding matrix showing the history of grants uh, to agencies and organizations. Over the life of the CDBG program, grants have been awarded to 36 different service organizations totaling over 4.99 million. <laughs> so next year we'll get, we'll get over the hump next year. Uh, the village also continues to have an excellent CDBG disbursement ratio. Uh, defined by HUD as the unspent balance in our Treasury account divided by our most recent entitlement amount. Uh, HUD calculates this for us for Skokie in March of each year and expects entitlement communities to have a ratio of less than 1.5. Uh, the, the village's disbursement ratio at the close of fiscal year 18, which was April 30th of this year, was 0.54, which is considered exemplary. Uh, since the report was included in the informational packet, I will highlight the CDBG program's progress through this month. And please keep in mind that HUD's funding announcement was made in May, uh, delaying the submittal of the village's action plan to HUD by two months, which also then delayed the start of projects, et cetera. So I'll just go through these uh, briefly. Uh, so underway, um, Finally, I can say the epoxy flooring uh, project for uh, the Lieberman Center, uh, CJE Senior Life, can move forward. Bids are due on Wednesday, so um, we'll be able to at least get through half their kitchen and really uh, make the flooring uh, safe and sanitary and, and make it look good as well. Um, and then program year 2017, uh, initially uh, we had funded replacement of one of two really big HVAC units. Uh, they didn't with a delay in funding for that year. They didn't think they would make it through the summer with, um, without replacing it. So they did replace uh, that equipment, uh, but they have lots of components in the HVAC system. So uh, we're putting the funding towards a control panel that will control the whole system and gradually build in efficiencies for the whole HVAC system. And then we have a lot of programs underway. Um, just a few highlights. Our home improvement program, we've improved 14 homes since May 1st, uh, and we also have two approvals uh, to move forward uh, with improvements to homes. Um, street resurfacing is complete, minus uh, just some administrative paperwork. Uh, the 50-50 sidewalk program, um, due to various circumstances, they weren't able to replace the five by five sidewalk squares uh, this fall, uh, so they'll do that in the spring, uh, but we have received uh, 13 applications uh, for funding. Um, again, some uh, HVAC related uh, projects are either underway, either uh, the bids have been, or the requests for proposals have been issued, or we've uh, also worked our way up to um, pre-construction meetings. And so um, in the pending category, um, the assessment of fair housing, it was kind of underway slash uh, pending. Uh, so um, we do have the uh, intergovernmental uh, <coughs> agreement. Uh, there was one other community that uh, is still working on officially joining in uh, the plan. So uh, at this point, um, Cook County, uh, who's leading this regional fair housing effort, uh, they plan on scheduling a kickoff meeting in January. Uh, and Wings, uh, uh, one of their uh, transitional homes, uh, has uh, door replacements in the queue, but not, we have an agreement between the village and them, but uh, we need to take the next step of getting bids and uh, replacing the doors. And the Zachariah Center, uh, the parking lot replacement, uh, their, um, their, their initial bids for their request did not include the Davis-Bacon prevailing wages, so they cannot move forward. Um, as based on the amount that we've funded for them, uh, but there are um, 
the parking lot is in need of replacement and we have other departments in the village um, like engineering and property standards that would like to see this parking lot also resurfaced uh, so um, we have a, a public hearing scheduled for also for uh, Tuesday January 22nd um, after the, the big presentation by all the proposals um, to uh, request additional funding to, to make that project a reality and we chose to go with the substantial amendment route so um, once the funding is available then we can just uh, go ahead and move forward with the project instead of waiting for a whole other cycle and possibly be where we're at at, at this time next year we do have some completed projects since the last update in December of last year, so we'll just highlight those. Some exciting HVAC rooftop units for a turning point. Uh, we replaced two additional ones. Um, yeah, you can see the hail damage and just the overall age and working hard of the, um, the unit itself. And so we have uh, two um, shiny new, much more efficient um, uh, HVAC units with hail guards as well so we won't have uh, the damage that you see there so hopefully they'll have a longer lifespan and uh, I know we're not into the um, in CDBG for aesthetics but uh, this was uh, window replacements to improve the um, the energy efficiency and indoor livability of this home and but it looks a lot nicer now too <laughs> and then um, for this current program year, um, Orchard Village, uh, the Floral Avenue house uh, received, uh, remodeled, or basically gutted and replaced uh, both bathrooms. Uh, this is the first floor bathroom and actually the layout was changed where you see the sink and the toilet was actually the shower and then the toilet was in the corner and the sink was at the far end of this picture. And actually the sink was used more like a grab bar so it made it really difficult for ongoing maintenance. Uh, so that's why the the layout was changed for this but and um, one there were two radiators in this uh, bathroom they took one out so it definitely gives though it's not like ADA wheelchair accessible it's much more easy to access and user friendly and then the second floor one is just quite similar to the first but uh, they did keep the radiator in this one so um, so funding, again, funding proposals uh, will, pre will be presented at the Tuesday, January 22nd uh, public hearing. And all applications or applicants are required to make a brief presentation of their respective proposals that evening. And uh, staff recommendations and the budget board's funding decisions uh, will be subject of the third public hearing on Monday, uh, February 4th. So are there any questions? Okay, and just for the record, um, I did receive an email from one resident, Earl Weiss. His email has been distributed to the members of the board and is therefore part of the record. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Thank All you, right. Carrie. Thank you. Look forward to Tuesday, January 22nd. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, maybe it's late. Well, I hope it's not colder because it's later in the winter, but <laughs> hopefully, the weather will be nice. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. Next item on the agenda Trustee Roberts. We make a motion to adjourn and happy holidays and a happy new year to all.